Hiya and welcome back to Living with Quarter Acquired Syndrome and today I am going to be discussing my journey with CES going hopefully try to go into detail about what happened to me um, and the challenges and obstacles that I've had to overcome as um, part of my journey. So I thought I would do a video like this just to um, kind of bring into perspective um, of how this condition can come about and to show basically the things I've had to go through with obviously with, with, with the NHS. So my journey started in February 2016 um, I had been away for uh, Valentine's weekend um, to Skegness in Lincolnshire here in the UK um, to see my now ex-husband um, who uh, worked at Butlands. I was perfectly fine over the weekend um, my back was perfectly fine Every, everything, everything was fine and dandy um, until I got off the train in Nottingham um, at the end of the weekend and my back was a bit stiff. Um, I thought nothing of it, nothing of it. Um, basically I just thought oh well I've been sat in the same position for two and a half hours um, and that was that. Um, and then over the course of a couple of days um, Obviously, being back home, my back started to really, really, really hurt. Um, this, to me, it felt like I had just pulled a muscle. Um, so I just treated it as a pulled muscle, got some ibuprofen gel, and was taking paracetamol. Um, and then it was just it it was getting a lot worse over that time period. Um, I went I went to see my GP, and he he just he he first thought it was obviously a bone muscle as well, so um, he just told me to carry on carry on as normal, and hopefully it it it, it would ease. Um, then on the 17th of February, um, I went with my friend to see her mum in hospital who had just had spinal surgery. She um, got on the bed with her mum um, just to say goodbye and then she couldn't get up. So I pulled her up and I felt something go pop in my back. The pain didn't start straight away and then it it gradually got worse o over the course of a few days and that's when the sciatic pain started um down my left leg and i went back to my gp and i said look i've got the sciatic pain um i felt some pop in my back and he said he, he gave me some medication so he gave me um um, codeine and naproxen, and said to come back in six weeks because that is the time frame um, on the NHS if you have sciatic pain and it doesn't go away within six weeks and then they will do an MRI scan. The MRI scan was done um, by this time you know it, it was getting on getting on for June um, I never got the results of that MRI scan and um, I ended up in hospital on in the June for three days on the spinal ward and um, they did a nerve block injection into the, into the nerves in my spine which traumatized me I was awake through the whole thing and it was extremely painful um, and then after that, um, the injection didn't work, 
Um, I was sent home after three days and the pain was just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. The injection didn't work at all. Within this time frame, obviously, I had lost um, the sensation, sensation to be able to empty my bladder, the sensation to be able to empty my bowels. I was getting numbness and tingling down my left leg in my left foot. I had numbness in the saddle area. And then on the 21st of, no, sorry, the 20th of July, I woke up and I couldn't move. I had um, no feeling from the waist down. And I was screaming, screaming, screaming. I couldn't move, couldn't move, couldn't move. Um, I was living with my uncle at the time and he obviously came into my bedroom and um he said i'll oh, just take you take your arm off because i had arm off at that time and i couldn't even reach over to grab the arm off off my bedside table i just couldn't move at all and um, we called 999 um the ambulance came out and it took me to the queen's medical center here in nottingham it's a bit big trauma hospital here in Nottingham and I was given um, paracetamol through IV drip and I was left for hours and I, did, I didn't get an emergency MRI scan until half past 11 in the evening. I went into um, the QMC accident emergency at four o'clock in the afternoon and I didn't get an emergency MRI until half past 11 in the evening. And at this point, my pain was through the roof. They did an emergency MRI. I was screaming the place down. Um, but obviously, they couldn't stop the MRI. They had to get it done. Um, I was taken up to the spinal ward. And the next morning, they came in and said that um, this would have been on the, on the 21st of July. They came into, into my room and they said that it was going to have to do emergency surgery. At this point, I didn't actually know I had quarter equina syndrome. They didn't tell me. They just said that they needed to operate um, straight away. And I was taken down at half past nine in the morning. And I didn't wake up until about 3, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, about half 3, 3 p.m. in recovery. At this stage, even in recovery, I still didn't know that I had quarter equina syndrome. I didn't find out until I got back up on, on the ward and a specialist nurse came and saw me and told me that I had quarter equina syndrome. Now, I've never even heard of quarter equina syndrome at that stage. Um, and my first thought was <laughs> that it, it was cancer or something something like that because I've never even heard of it so um <clears throat> and that's when yeah, it all it all started setting and things started to um make sense um to me I was in hospital just over a week um I was taught how to um walk again how to use the stairs how to dress myself um, and then I was discharged from hospital back home. Um, after that I didn't have any um, physiotherapy, I had to do it all myself. Um, and then I was back and forth to the hospital, you know, thing, things weren't improving for me. My pain was getting a lot worse. Um, <clears throat> my, my, my mobility was getting worse and they still didn't offer me any physiotherapy. They just told me to, to get on with it. It's just one of them things, there's nothing much they can do. 
Now, over the course of, well, it'll be nearly six years for me, um, I've fought with the NHS for more treatments, um, knowing very, very well that I needed more surgery, um, physiotherapy, pain management, a urologist, incontinence, um, and it took me till 2018 to finally um, be taught how to um, intermittent catheterization. In between all this, I was constantly in and out of hospital, trying to get them to do something. Um, there was one time I was in hospital and the nurse turned around to me and said they, they will only do something when they have to do something. And that was that with that moment. It took me until 2019 to finally start getting some, somewhere. Um, I got my GP to refer me to... Um, the Princess Royal in Sheffield, which is a specialist um, spinal treatment centre. Um, and then in 2021, I finally found a consultant here in Nottingham that wanted to take my case on. Um, basically, it, it's a neurosurgeon here in Nottingham. Um, he is really, really good. Um, and basically what he has said that he is willing to um, do more surgery but he wants to try other things first and he wants me to obviously pros and cons of having more surgery especially with infusion um, there is a possibility that it's going to need doing again there is a possibility that uh, the disc above where the fusion site is will go and you're going to need more surgery. You've got to weigh up the pros and cons with obviously fusion surgery. So the treatment that he has decided to try first before going into a fusion is um, basically what they're going to do is they're going to I sat some electro, electrodes, electrodes, whatever they're called, onto the nerves and they're going to fry the nerves off to see if that improves um, my pain and my mobility. He has told me that there, there is a high risk of this not working and if it doesn't work for me, then he will more than happily go ahead and operate on me. Um, it is a scary thing, a scary thought to have, um, you know, they're basically electrocuting you. Um, and I'm quite, quite nervous about that. Um, I have my appointment with pain management on the 28th of this month, um, to discuss the, the, the this treatment. The ob obstacles and challenges that I've had to overcome, obviously relationships, with my family have broken down because of this condition. Um, in 2018, I decided to try and do, do something with, with my life. And I decided to go ahead and start to train to become a midwife because that's something I've always wanted to do since I was a child. Unfortunately, my body couldn't handle handle it the pain was excruciating and then i had ended up having to leave um so <clears throat> i've come i've come over these obstacles um and i'm in a better place now i have a, a, a really good support network around me um but it does make me angry that i've had to lose things to gain something and that is something that i have to work on with myself to overcome and to come to terms with, with that i will be putting a few pictures up in in this video just of me 
going 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 through my cycle of my ces journey my journey is not over it won't be over unfortunately there's no cure for a quarter aquinas syndrome but you learn to be able to live with it comfortably you know what you can and can't do you listen to your body and you do slowly come to terms with your diagnosis So that is a bit about my um, CES journey. Hopefully that has opened people's eyes a bit to this condition and how the NHS do treat you with this condition because a lot, a lot of people in the NHS don't know anything about this condition and even when they do know, they still don't treat you the best as they're meant to and finding the correct people who will finally listen to you is a very very long journey and a very tiring journey and when you finally do find that that correct person that correct consultant it's like weight has been lifted off your shoulders soldiers shoulders <laughs> um and finally you you have you find that hope that finally you're gonna be able to live comfortably because somebody is finally listening to you and that 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 is the main thing you you need to have someone to listen to you a lot of people especially in, within spinal teams a lot of them they don't listen even though they say they are listening but they're not listening and it's important to find that uh, correct consultant that will have the time and the energy to put into you to make you a better person and that's what it's all about making you a better person making you comfortable and being able to have some sort of life and i'm gonna end the video here I will be putting pictures up um, and there's just one last thing I want to say and that is hope is everything. Thank you for watching and well, I will see you soon.